this is day, I think, 18 or 17, one of those. I'm sorry I didn't upload the past two days. Uh, I have had finals going on. Uh, I think, I honestly, I don't even remember what day was which, but one of the days I went out with some of my friends after one of my finals, and then I just kind of forgot to upload. And then, oh yeah, and then it was yesterday. I had a Latin final, and I was up to like 3 o'clock studying. And so when I got home, uh, I just, I went to bed. So that's why I didn't upload yesterday. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, so there, there will be three videos going up today, uh, which I know that's not like a good thing to upload three videos in one day. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, don't worry though, they're, I'm not gonna like just skip them. They're still gonna be up. Uh, but yeah, so today I'm gonna show you guys how to make like a team PSD, kind of like, I'm just gonna make a PSD for red, just as an example. Uh, by the way, this, there will be my AVI, like I, or I released a pack with like a bunch of team PSDs. If you guys wanna go check that out, I guess the link will be in the description. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna show you guys how to make these, how to, you know, do all the lighting, the CC, um, and everything. So, yeah, pretty much, um, obviously you're gonna need Cinema 4D, uh, and Photoshop. Uh, there are other ways to do it if you don't have Cinema 4D, which I, if you guys want to see that, like if you, if a bunch of you guys don't have Cinema 4D or something, uh, leave a, uh, comment or something and maybe I'll show you guys how to do it in Photoshop if for some reason you don't have Cinema 4D. Uh, so there will be the AVI like PSD thing or not, yeah I think fuck the link to the video where I gave all these away what are, I don't know which video that was uh, and then there will also be my like a link to my um, uh, Lightroom um, if you like if you already bought this like you're a true fan but I will be giving away this for free um, but anyway let's just get right into it uh, now first off if you guys don't know um, how to or, well, okay, so the first thing you need is an AI. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get your AI file. Now, if you guys don't know what, like, the AI file is, like, if you're trying to make one for your team, um, first off, I'll just import this real quick. Uh, pretty much, though, how you make one, I'm not going to do, like, a full-on tutorial in this video because it's it's kind of, like, it just it's really time-consuming. Uh, pretty much what an AI is, you just come over here to the pen tool. You just, uh, you just kind of, like, mask out the logo or whatever. So, like, you just trace it all. And then once it's traced, you just go file, uh, export, pass to Illustrator, and then you just name it whatever. So pretty much what you do is you just you just uh, bring it in. If you guys don't know how to get like an AI file, I would suggest watching another video on that. Just like search up how to make an AI file, Cinema 40 or something like that. What you want to do is you want to merge all these. Now if you don't know how to merge them all, you just uh, click the first one and you hold shift and go to the last one. Or you can just click on the first one and hold command and click on all three. Doesn't really matter. Anyway, you then you do connect plus delete. So, yeah. All right, so then you get this path. Um, now, one thing that I see a lot, like a lot of people, at least that I know, like I've been in Skype calls and stuff, they will like adjust, they'll like move this around the AI path and then they'll make it 3D. You want to make it 3D before you do anything. So once you have the path here, you're just going to come up here and go extrude nerds. And then you're just going to take the path and drag it into the extrude nerds. Um, and then you get this, then you get, it becomes 3D, then you can go over here to the object. So then once you have it in here, uh, as you can see over here in the movement, you can make it like, uh, more 3D or whatever. So, I'm just gonna bring it to about there. And, uh, honestly though, like, um, it, it'll probably vary, like, just depending on what it looks like. So like for this one, just because of where it is and how small it is, uh, like 300 looks good. But for some other logos, it may not look as good. So yeah, so always keep that in mind. Uh, but then, try to center it as best as you can. So like right about here, kind of where you can see like kind of under it, just where it looks kind of 3D. Uh, and then we're just gonna come over here and then rotate it oops, a little bit like right there. And then maybe we'll bring down the depth a little bit more. And then, yeah, so then you're just gonna wanna, what you're gonna wanna do, you wanna make, come over here to your render, or actually these will all be saved for you, but you just wanna come up here and click this, and then it'll render. So what you're gonna wanna do, is then you're just gonna wanna save this, so save as 16, I don't know if that really matters, but I always do that just in case. Right, click okay. And then we'll just save it to our desktop. Red 3D, and save. Then you want to close out of this, come back here, and make sure you don't move anything, and then switch the depth to zero. And then just render it. 
and then save this as red, or it doesn't really matter what you save it as, but just red 2D. Then you can close out of that and come into Photoshop. I don't know, I just have a pack open here. Sorry about that. Then what you're gonna wanna do is file, new, uh, just whatever, let's call it red. Uh, and then pixels, just go 800 by 800. Resolution, you can just do like 230, it doesn't really matter. Then just click OK. And then click there. So then you're just gonna wanna put your like logos in over your desktop. So then you just wanna bring your two files that you made, so just grab both those here, just click enter, enter. So then you just wanna bring those in here, and you can make sure, also make sure when you're adjusting these two layers that you're selecting both of them, uh, so that when you turn the 2D, so like the 2D is overlapping the 3D. So then after that, just come over to the layer zero, just call it like whatever, back in, uh, and you can just do command I to invert it. Then up here on the red 2D, we're just gonna uncheck that. Then over here to the red 3D, we're gonna double click, and so now we're gonna do like all the lighting and everything in Photoshop. So then go color overlay, then white, then go color dodge, and just kind of drag it down to right about there. That looks good. So like th we'll just make 35, and then just rasterize it. Come back here again. Go to the satin. I think that's how you say it. And then just kind of mess around with it and switch it to I think color burn. Yeah. I'm just kind of drag that down to like 15. Kind of mess with it a little bit more. And then just rasterize that again. Double click on it again. And then just go gradient overlay. And then go uh, darken, or I'm sorry, uh, color burn. Then reverse. And then just bring it down to maybe like 25. Yeah, that looks good. And then rasterize it again. Then up here on the 2D, we're going to want to turn it back on, turn the fill down to zero, not the opacity, but the fill. Double click on it, go inner glow, and uh, switch it to like 10, make this yellow a uh, white, and then go color dodge. And honestly, like, we'll switch that to 15, then just bring this down. Actually, here, hold on, switch it to five, actually. And then bring the color dodge down, turn it about there. I click OK. Sorry if you can do that. Then double click on the 3D again, go multiply, or go to the gradient, go multiply, reverse, and then kind of bring it down a little bit and go back here. Again, just go back to color dodge. And then that's kind of how you make it look, like the lighting look good. Actually, then like satin in here. And then another inner glow on the 3D still. Then just switch to color dodge. And then bring it down to like 20. Oops, not 220. And then bring the size up a little bit. Then rasterize this again. Then double click on the 3D. And I think a drop shadow looks good. Then a color overlay and the uh, color dodge then. And switch this one just to four. And then I think, let me see if that looks good. So yeah, so then that's how you make that part of the 3D. So then like when you zoom out, as you can tell, it looks good and everything. So uh, now we're just gonna select both of them, do Command A, uh, and then make sure you select it on the little moving thing and click right here, just to center it, and then do Command D to deselect. So now that we have the logo, uh, we just wanna make some text. So obviously just text. And whatever. Uh, then just make it white. Uh, and I'm, I'm just using Gotham Bold. Then for the size, uh, it doesn't really matter what the size is as long as it looks good. So we'll just bring it down to like right about there. Uh, again, just do Command A, center it again, and do Command D. Then uh, it doesn't really matter if it's below or above the text or the 3D thing. Just double click on it. And so, again, this will, this link will be in the description, so you can download this PSD. But, so you want to go gradient overlay and click reverse. Uh, bring this down to, like, 90. Go to 
Inner glow. Nine. Um, right about there. Then, add some drop shadow. And then that's how you do the text. Then what you want to do with the text again is do Command T. And then come up here to this little thing, click on it, and then go to the warp and go arch. And just switch it to two, or actually even one. And then switch the vertical, I think it is, to a, like a two, or a one maybe, yeah. And then just, yeah, switch, so then, so switch the bend and the vertical, or the V to one. Then just click right there, and then just click apply. And then that's, yeah, so that's how you do the text. Now, we're gonna come back up to the 3D again, uh, just to get a little bit, bit of better lighting. We're gonna just go color burn. Or even multiply, I think, will look good. Right about there. And I know that there's a lot of lighting involved. Um, it just makes it look better, honestly. Let's switch this to white. Color dodge even, maybe. And so switch it to five. So, I know that there's a lot of lighting involved in this, uh, but it, it does make it look a lot better at the end. Uh, and honestly, okay, here, hold on, bring, I'm sorry. Bring the uh, color dodge up. I don't know, just copy these settings. We'll go 30, 10 for color dodge on the 2D layer. Um, again, I am kind of trying to take this all in one cut, so I'm sorry if it is kind of confusing at points. Hopefully you can follow along, but yeah. So anyway, you just want to create a new layer, which you just come down here to the new layer. Uh, come over here to your brush, uh, turn the size up, and then turn the hardness down, so it's like that. And then come over here and just make it white, and then click dead center in the screen. Then you can, what, what I do is I do V, I press V, and then it brings you back to this little tool, like the select thing. Then what you want to do is do Command T, hold Shift, and Alt, I think it is, yeah. And just kind of drag it so that the light is over the whole logo. And then just drag the opacity down of the light. So it's at, I guess it's at 12. That looks good. Then make a duplicate of the layer one. Drag it down over onto the text. And just make it smaller. And then with the text, you can turn it up a little bit to like maybe 15. So we'll have this one be at 10. And this one be at 15. So you have the text light. Oops. Then we have the logo light. Then what you want to do is again, you just want to come up here, create a new layer. Um, oops. And then just again, put that center on the screen, press V. Bring this one down, we'll just call this the back lighting. And then make it kind of big. And then do again, Command A, center it, and then do Command D to deselect. Then switch this one to like three or maybe six, and that just adds some backlighting. Then on the red logo, just come on here, like double click on it again, go drop shadow, and just make the drop shadow so that it kind of goes over the lighting. So if you guys want, you can just copy these settings. I right there, it looks good. So that's how you do that. Now for the CC uh, over the uh, Logo, I see a lot of people adding like really hard CCs. You just want to add like a curve to it. Oops. Right here. And then drag it down just a little bit to like right there. And switch to 50. And then just add an exposure. And dra drag that up to like, let's go point 30 or 50, I mean and switch this one to 60. And then you can merge these two together, just call it CC or whatever. Oops. And then that just adds some stuff onto it. And if you come back up here to the CC, you just add another thing, or like down here in the little, I don't know what this is called. You just go solid color, and then kind of like a really dark gray. And drag a blow all that, then go lighten, and then add which one of these you want to add another curves, and then drag it down, then switch this one down to like 20, 
and then add a, I think it's called posterize maybe, uh, switch it to 120. So then when we look at this again, it just kind of adds some lighting and stuff to it. So, uh, oh yeah, and then you want to do, you want to create one more light, um, which is just, again, just kind of click in the middle and drag it to the top and then uh, kind of make it big, just like right there. That looks good. I'm just bring down the opacity to that. And oh, actually, with the poster, and what the poster guys does, by the way, is it kind of uh, if we bring it above everything, it kind of like makes it so that there can't be as too many colors. And I think it's actually 160 that you want to switch it to, or maybe it's yeah, switch it to 200. Actually, I'm sorry. Uh, and what it does is it just makes it just reduces the file size. So that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks for watching. Peace.